Hello everyone, Jonathan Casey here with Mercury's Messenger Astrology. How's everybody doing today? Good to see you. Um, glad you made it to 2021. Yeah, Happy New Year, Happy Holidays. Uh, we still have some trying times ahead of us. So um, today what I'd like to speak about is the debate about the age of Aquarius. Whether we are or are not in the age of Aquarius. There's... Uh, some debate in the astrological community okay <clears throat> now I personally feel like we are but I'm also going to say that I don't really believe that there's uh, a cusp I feel like there's an overlap so I also don't feel like the age of a, a Pisces is fully uh, complete either okay now I'm going to bring up uh, many points uh, some that will back up um, the fact that we're in the age of Aquarius and some that will um, that will say that we aren't really uh, as of yet so um, I'd like to start the uh, the conversation with the Saturn and Jupiter conjunction that happened at zero degrees Aquarius on December 21st 20 20 because that's uh, really what brought this debate back um, to the table okay so this happened in at zero degrees Aquarius yes that brought in some strong Aquarian energy um, however the Saturn and Jupiter conjunction is not that rare it happens every 20 years approximately okay so here we have a 20 year cycle However, there are other cycles that I'd like to mention ab about uh, this conjunction. There's a 200-year cycle, and there's also an 800-year cycle. Uh, every 200 years, approximately, um, they will conjoin in the same element. Uh, what I mean by that is, so this last one was in Aquarius. For the next 200 years, they should pretty much always uh, conjoin in either Aquarius, Gemini, or Libra, the air signs. For the previous 200 years, they would have happened in either Capricorn, uh, Taurus, or Virgo, the earth signs. Yes, there was a conjunction in 1980 that happened in Libra. Um, aside from that one, it was 200 years of earth. Uh, basically what I'm going to say about that one is that it was just prepping the atmosphere, the energies for the shift into air. It'll possibly happen at the towards the end of every 200 year cycle. Um, now there, because of the, uh, the elements, there's four elements. So now that brings us to an 800 year cycle. Excuse me. Uh, 800 years ago, that brings us to um, March, sometimes in, in March of 2026, I believe it was, was, uh, I have it actually on the screen, behind, um, where's my cursor, here it is, where does it say, what, uh, am I on the right page, yeah, March 4th, 2026. Okay, um, yeah, that was the last time that uh, it happened very, very close to Earth. However, um, the last time that it happened um, on the winter solstice, okay, making the, the Star of Bethlehem, was in the year 7 B.C., so um 2000 uh 2028 years ago i believe right yeah um yeah okay so 2028 years ago uh that doesn't make a full um so we go there's a 26,000 year cycle, uh, to be more precise, it's 25,700 and something, 
if you divide that into 12 because there's 12 signs that brings us to um, 2147.66666 so 2148 years okay so there's a 120 year uh, discrepancy here for it to be um, exact and even if they played with uh, the years this is the astrology that brings us to 7 BC um, so that can't be fudged um, so that would kind of say that uh, no we're, we're not in the age of Aquarius not for at least another 120 uh, years um, okay so what other information do I want to bring up so so far um, we have yes some Aquarian energy but uh, if you do the math it's siding on more no now I still said that I feel like we are in the age of Aquarius so let's bring out some more um, information what do I have here let me let me think where I want it to go oh yeah okay so um, coming in February here next month we are going to have where do I have this at ah, same as this here okay so uh, here I want to talk about the Gnostic philosopher Samuel um, however you pronounce that declared February 4th 1962 to be the beginning of the age of Aquarius heralded by the alignment of the first six planets the Sun the moon and the constellation Aquarius um, okay so there was seven planets uh, I don't really get the first six planets as Sun and moon I'm counting the Sun and moon and five other planets so I'm not really 100% sure what he's um, talking about. But yeah, there were seven planets in Aquarius, uh, February 4th, 1962. I also want to bring us down here for the, fo the following day. The eclipse was on the 4th, as far as I know. Well, let's look at this really quick. The eclipse was February 4th, yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, and all the planets here are in Aquarius. So, uh, now we go to this February coming up. Let's, uh, go now one month, February. And here again, we got not quite yet. Uh, the moon needs to get there so how many more the moon is here in Aquarius so I believe here we should have seven one two three four five six okay what's going on there should be seven Saturn the moon Venus Jupiter Mercury, the Sun, what are we missing, what are we missing here, Mars, Mars, maybe by the end of the, no, what's going on here, do I have to restart my whole video? now the moon has moved out of Aquarius I could have sworn there was seven sorry I might have been mistaken um, Mars appears to not be in Aquarius anyhow this was just a little bit of extra information 
Um, because there was a meme going around talking about. I felt it said even more than seven. Um, I'm shocked. I could have sworn I looked at this already. Uh, and I had seen Mars in Aquarius, but no, Mars is entering Taurus tomorrow, and Taurus is a long ways away from Aquarius, so that's accurate. I really can't think of why I thought there was seven. Well, there's at least six. You know, they might be talking about some asteroid or or something like that as being the uh, the seventh. Anyhow, um, six planets nonetheless. That's some that's some strong Aquarian energy here again. Okay, taking place. Um, how many years later? Sixty. 61. I like those numbers too, the 1 and the 6 or the 1 and the 9. Um, I had a, a thought about that earlier. I don't remember what I wanted to elaborate on that. Okay. Anyhow, yeah, there are some strong Aquarian uh, energies going on between the great uh the great conjunction that just happened uh february with six planets um taking place let me get my face back on the screen here um yeah with six planets taking place in aquarius there are some strong aquarian energies taking place now some other points that i kind of want to make um less astrological maybe uh still there still is some a astrology going on here uh one of the last videos i did talked about the uh church uh in paris that burned in uh i think it was april 15th of 2019 and i brought up a chart and that chart, I feel, is very telling for an age shift. Now, one thing I didn't mention in um, that video was that the coronavirus um, surfaced, basically. Uh, so, that was Aries season, the when the church burned. Um, and six months approximately later when you'd have your Aries full moon uh, is when the um, coronavirus basically uh, first it wasn't a mainstream thing yet um, but that's basically when the coronavirus kind of uh, came about and then six months after that uh, we fall back into the Aries uh, season and that's when uh, lockdowns hit um, hit the greater public now that was when Saturn moved into Aquarius right on that equinox point um, and when the fires happened for the church Saturn was one degree above the horizon, dawning into the sky. Okay. Saturn rules the age of Aquarius. Um, I have another video that I want to do, uh, and maybe I'll briefly uh, speak about this. So, Jupiter, Jesus, ruled Pisces, and that... A uh, great conjunction that happened in 7 BC was in Pisces. Um, and now this great conjunction happens in Aquarius. And Saturn is the traditional ruler of Aquarius. 
So, um, I feel like, you know, the last 2,000 years, uh, Jesus ruled the age, and now for the next 2,000 years or so, um, Saturn's to rule. Saturn has that archetype um, known, referred as uh, Satan, the devil. Uh, and I feel there is some a lot of truth to that. However, um, I'd like to maybe uh, shed some light on this aspect as well. So, Saturn is a great teacher. And we all have Saturn in our charts. Saturn rules the physical world. So, uh... In that sense, we are a part of the beast. Okay, we have we're a balance between spirit and um, and and beast and physical. Okay, so having said that, um, regardless, we are in a contract with the devil regardless 100 percent no matter what no matter how much you believe in god and jesus you cannot cut your tie to the physical reality and that physical reality um you know we're called to we have saturn is like the genie he grants you wishes. Uh, and I don't feel like there's a limited number of wishes. Um, but every wish comes with a trick, comes with some sort of uh, deal. So, um, you know, your wishes can be ethical. Um, but there's some kind of chain that comes with it. Um and there's some kind of repercussion, some kind of karmic attachment, okay? So that's why even uh, Satan worshippers who are doing uh, evil things, okay, um, for wealth or what have you, um, they have some karmic uh, repercussions that you know, may or may not catch up with them in that particular lifetime. Uh, so, in our dealings with the devil, um, in your day-to-day -day lives, make sure your wishes are... are ethical, I guess. I don't know, you know. Um... Because to me, Saturn's main purpose is to bring maturity, especially in the age of Aquarius. Um, Aquarius is uh, attracting. So this is basically, um, you reap what you sow, uh, you, you attract what you create. Um, and so we're bound to those dealings, okay? Um, and so, yeah, there's a lot of darkness um, that's coming to surface currently, okay? Uh, we could see it in politics. We could see it uh, with... I'm just going to say Bill Gates and Fossey. Um, I don't feel like they have our best interests. They have made some kind of uh, deal with the devil. And um, they're hoping that um, putting 
humanity out as a sacrifice will um, reward them with their wishes. So that largely depends on our maturity, on our collective wishes. Um, yeah. Anyhow, I feel like I'm falling way off topic. Um, it has to do, though, with the age of Aquarius. And that those are some reasons why I feel like we are in that age of Aquarius um, kind of deal. Now, someone also wanted to say that um, I've heard this argument an age is going to happen uh, at the spring equinox, at the beginning of um, Aries season, and not at a winter solstice point. Now what I have to say about that is that um, Aries season is a time of initiation. However, the winter solstice is a birthing point, and we can see that there's nine months in between, which is um, a birthing cycle in humans. So, um, yeah, you know, for it to happen on the winter solstice uh, is a birthing point. Um, it's not until the solstice is over for the birth to happen. So um, we are currently giving birth. Okay. Um, and here's maybe where that 120 year discrepancy comes in. Maybe the next 120 years really decide um, the fate of humanity in the age of Aquarius um, or is just the time where we build that age now something I want to bring up here okay when I was saying about the Church of Notre Dame uh, it, the years that it was built okay was 1163 to 13 45 now the um, this here 1226 is approximately right in the middle of that time okay so um, and I feel the church burning like I said in my previous video, uh, has a lot to do with um, a, a belief system, you know, the end of um, religion and the rise of the new religion. Uh, and let me just put my face back up here. Science, okay? Um, I don't feel like it's properly represented science uh it's kind of almost like a democratic uh science okay um a chosen chosen narratives chosen experiments chosen data um that's being considered when there are there always is other um the word that i would like to use here other uh models that are always possible okay that um often do not get considered they get suppressed and um, 
we popularize certain ideas and claim that to be science. Um, and so it's a religion, it's a belief system uh, in itself, okay? Believing that uh, the science that's been put mainstream is the only science to be considered when there's so much that's not being considered. So many variables. I feel like, have I brought up everything that I wanted to talk about? I hope that, let me see, how long has this been going? 25 minutes. Um, yeah, I hope that I haven't lost anyone, that uh, my message has been pretty clear. Um, Is there more that I wanted to bring up? Um, oh yeah, I guess so. I've done videos about this too, right? In the year 2024, Pluto will now be at zero degrees Aquarius while Saturn and Jupiter make their first square. So here we're bringing back that zero degrees Aquarius, Saturn, Jupiter energy, okay? Um, so 2024, the Aquarian energy is strong again. And in, uh, 2025, in August and September, there is some very interesting astrology. I've done some videos on this as well. And here we have... Now, Uranus, the modern-day ruler of Aquarius. Um, oh, sorry. He's in Gemini. Zero degrees. But he's making a sextile to Saturn and Neptune at zero degrees. Aries, who is making a sextile to Pluto at zero degrees Aquarius. So Pluto has retrograded and then um, went back to that zero degrees Aquarius point. And that actually trines right back to um, Uranus in at zero degrees Gemini. Now we're also in eclipse season here. So there's a Virgo new moon followed by a full moon eclipse in Pisces, followed by another new moon uh, in Virgo, which is an eclipse here, followed by a full moon in Aries. And those two, um, so there's two lunar cycles, uh, both starting in, um, in Virgo, that have... Uh, an eclipse involved in the lunar cycle. Now the first um, the first new moon uh, in Virgo is at zero degrees and that is making, m might be at one degree uh, I'm pretty sure it's at zero but that is uh, squaring squaring I believe Uranus. So let me just see here. Uranus would be here and that would make a square. Yes. Okay, so is squaring that new moon. This would be, yep. Yeah. And then the following um, the following Virgo new moon, which is an eclipse, would be happening at the last degrees of Virgo which is still aspecting um, these points now it's making more a trine to Uranus and would it be yes it would be trining Pluto as well making a grand trine however so the post eclipse energy there would be in Libra. So um, that post eclipse energy would still be being carried by the moon, uh, making a grand uh, air 
trying. I don't think I brought that information up before. Um, so that great, that grand air trine um, with Pluto and Uranus. Pluto is transformation and Uranus is change. Okay. So, um, and that's Aquarian air energy again. So, you know, it's, it's really hard to say a hundred percent, uh, if we're in Aquarius or not, but I feel like we are, even though there's that 120 year, uh, discrepancy here. Um, I really can't explain that. Um, we are in, to me, some kind of shift, okay? Uh, the world's never going to be the same after 2020. Um, coronavirus, I feel, is real. However, I feel like it is extremely over-exaggerated. Um, and it's, it's been... Uh, a globalist agenda to uh, usher in a one world government to try and um, and you know microchip bring everything into a robotic sense now this is um, I really feel, however, that we are headed towards a global reset. We are headed towards a technological advancement. However, I would like to say that the human body is the most advanced um, technology uh, available and to tap into uh, the human potential um, the the other realms um, of quantum physics the laws of attraction as a as Aquarius suggests that I feel like we don't need the physical technology. Uh, that is a deal um, that doesn't serve us, okay? So we're making a deal, like I said. What will that deal be? I feel like technology has just been for example, you know, 3D television. With that, it has allowed us to imagine flying. And I feel like if we start to truly believe in our power that... Um, that reality is a vibration and isn't physical. It is a wave, and that is the symbol of Aquarius, a wave. Um, so I don't feel like hope is lost. I feel like we really have to uh, get our shit together, our game together. And believe. Now, this brings me towards uh, the next video that I'd like to um, to 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 make after this one, um, and I'm gonna bring up my own chart and my own um, self belief, and and um, why. I have some difficulties 
I guess, with that. Um, I really feel like I experienced um, something in 2029, uh, 2019, sorry. Uh, I feel like the call to adventure. Um, and I feel like the call to adventure brings, reveals, removes the veil, remove, uh, allows you to see the truth. And the truth is terrifying. And it causes that fight, fight, fl fight, flight, or freeze uh, kind of scenario. And I don't feel like I fought it. I feel like I, uh, I froze. And the longer that I stayed frozen, the more I started to... Um, to run, to, to, to flight. At the same time, consciously starting to understand uh, that I've given up the fight and um, that is causing some Some uh, mental health issues I feel because I'm not believing in myself um, and by not believing in myself uh, those issues sort of can surface and uh, you have to start I have to start believing in myself otherwise um, I feel like I'm just going to lose it so, yeah, I, I, I really have a powerful chart, a difficult chart, a chart that has caused great, great heartache. And um, that will be my next video. Overcoming my chart. So, thanks again for watching. Um, hope you guys enjoy this. Hope you guys got, get something out of it. Uh, it was a little bit long um, and you know I just kind of come out here and do these charts uh, these videos they're not very structured they're not that planned ahead of time um, I was actually doing this the other day I had a little toke and uh, therefore it wasn't going well um, and there was some information that I wanted to bring about that I completely forget now what it was. So I was trying to, before starting this video, uh, remember what it was by watching the clips uh, that I had tried to film a couple days ago. And it turned out that my volume uh, for the video was, was, was turned off, so... I didn't hear a single word that I said and I thought I had uh, pulled up web pages but after scrolling through the videos uh, I didn't reference um, any information so there was something that I had to say around the year 2040 I don't think it was the year 2040 exactly. Um, I feel like it might have had something to do with the church or the Saturn-Jupiter conjunction or I wish I could remember, you know, it might have had something to do with the Vikings. Anyhow, there was a piece of information that I was hoping to reference that I can't remember what it was 
um, I was meaning to reference it in this video and I just can't recall what it what it was now I just remember that it had something it was approximately 16 maybe 18 year discrepancy um, from the the Saturn Jupiter conjunction happening uh, close to Earth like it was 800 years ago um, so yeah anyhow uh, it's not important unless you guys can figure it out <laughs> so I'll let you go anyhow okay I have a hard time saying goodbye <laughs> so see you later